So by the time that I probably release this video, Alex Smith will, will have already been released from the Washington football team. It was announced yesterday that Alex Smith and the Washington football team are planning to part ways this week. It may be as soon as today, but it is going to be probably toward the end of this week at the latest that Alex Smith will be a Washington football player no more. And so what does this actually mean for Alex Smith? Is there going to be any market for him out there right now that we are in this situation in which there are so many different quarterbacks who may be on the move and some big name quarterbacks as well. And quarterbacks though certainly um, have the ability to lead a team deep into the playoffs, if not the Super Bowl, where does that leave Alex Smith? Because Alex, as we all know, he is a winner. He wins <laughs> ugly sometimes, but he is definitely a winner. However, as we saw in this past season, once he gets hurt, his, his abilities are greatly limited. And even though that I really... <laughs> I'm a very huge Alex Smith fan, as everybody knows. But when he got that calf injury and it took him several weeks to try to, to get himself back into playing shape, and not only that, but really he just, he, he got to, well, let me put it to you this way. When he actually got back on the field, you can tell that he was not healthy. He may have felt that he was healthy enough to go, but we could see that Alex had absolutely no mobility whatsoever. And it just seems to be in this day and age in the NFL, your quarterback has to have some wheels on him. Because if not, he is going to get sacked more times than not. Now, you do look at guys like Tom Brady, who obviously... Tom Brady has never really been a mobile quarterback, but he has always had the, uh, I think the, uh, not the ability, but he has always had the luxury of being behind a pretty good offensive line. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line, especially as the season kind of progressed, got much better. And I mean, you could, uh, you could actually see when Tom Brady, when he was getting pressure, the Bucks were losing games, but when he was having all the time in the world to pass the ball to to complete passes, then the Bucks were basically winning. I mean, it's night and day. But for guys like Tom Brady, then yeah, certainly you have to put him behind a good offensive line. But let's face it, not every offensive line in the NFL is going to be like a Pro Bowl type of offensive line. They're not going to be stout like the Hogs. You know, they're not going to be as successful as what we saw back in the 80s with the Redskins. So having said that, you really do need to have a quarterback who has escapability, who can move within the pocket, but who can also scramble if he needs to and be able to make passes on the run. And Alex Smith was exactly like that before his injury. And after that, he really didn't have that escapability as much anymore. I mean, he could still kind of sort of escape a little bit. We saw a couple of plays that, that broke down, and Alex Smith was able to get out and, and pick up a few yards, but uh, there would have been a huge difference between that play in this year and that same play back in, let's say, 2017 and earlier. Of course, yes, I realize, well, you're also talking about a younger Alex Smith, but you're also talking about Alex Smith, who was not injured, who didn't have this horrific leg injury. So having said all of that, um, I, I really I really wish Alex Smith well. As you guys know, and I've said it in past videos, I have always been a huge fan of Alex Smith. I always felt that he was one of those underrated quarterbacks who it seemed like whenever he finally really started to get things going 
then it's like the the rug would get pulled out from under him. You know, I mean, we're talking about those years that he went through some bad coaching in San Francisco. Finally, gets a good coaching uh, staff in San Francisco. Finally, starts making some good plays and playing great ball and getting the 49ers into the playoffs and really starting to take off then he gets jettisoned to another team same thing happens there he he helps to build a winner in Kansas City and then in Kansas City they draft Patrick Mahomes and then guess what happens well then he gets jettisoned to the Washington Redskins and then from there he is a six and three quarterback although I will say he wasn't necessarily playing his best football of his entire life with Washington in 2018 but he was winning uh, like I said the Redskins were six and three at that point and then the horrific leg injury happened so having said all of that uh, you know Alex Smith he has been a a warrior and a, a battle-tested quarterback throughout his entire career. And, you know, I would definitely say I think when you saw that interview with GQ, and for those of you who may have missed the video I put out about the GQ article, and there's quite a few of you guys who did, so check out that video. I'll leave a link in the, the uh, description. But... There was certainly your calling sign to say, yeah, Alex Smith is not going to be on this team in 2021. He's going to be somewhere else, and he still wants to play elsewhere. He's not going to be starting. I really seriously doubt he's going to be starting for any other team, but um, he's, he's going to be playing somewhere else that we know of. So what does that mean for Washington? Well, certainly for one thing, on the business side of all of this, Washington is going to save a little over $14 million uh, by cutting Alex Smith. And I, I really thought that when I looked at the cap numbers and all that, I really, I was wrong. I, I thought that they would save more if they cut him after June, but obviously that wasn't the case. I'm not an expert on the cap, but they're saving about $14 million by cutting him now. So as much as I like Alex Smith, as much as I've loved his story, and I will say if you really want to show Alex Smith how much you appreciated him and all of his efforts that he gave as he was a Washington Redskins or Washington football team player, then contribute to his charity. It's called the Alex Smith Foundation, and I will leave a link in the description below to that as well. So uh, that that is a, a very good way of showing Alex Smith and how much you appreciated him, saying thank you for battling out with our favorite team, the Washington football team. So now that Alex Smith is going to be out of the picture, here are my predictions. Number one, the only way, the only way that Taylor Heineke is going to be the starter in 2021, and mark my words, go back and bookmark this video, go back and watch it again, and heckle me if I'm wrong, but I think the only way that Taylor Heineke starts in 2021 is if the Washington football team drafts a quarterback and that quarterback is going to be the future starter of the Washington football team but not this season then that is when Taylor Heineke is going to be named the starter of the Washington football team however if Washington decides to go out in free agency even if they do wind up also drafting a quarterback if they go out in free agency and they pick up a quarterback in free agency, they are probably not going to pick up a bridge quarterback in a sense of somebody who can just kind of keep the, the wheels on, on the car. They are, they're going to want someone who can compete, who can get this team an NFC East championship, who can get this team back into the playoffs and get some playoff wins. 
because let me tell you, Ron Rivera and really honestly any other coach, but Ron Rivera should not, should not be looking at this as in, you know, this past season was a fluke. He's going to be looking at, okay, we were 7-9 and nine this past season. We got into the playoffs. We were NFC East champions. But we need to, we need to up that. We need to up our game. We need to have a better record. We need to also continue to try to repeat as NFC East champions. And we need to definitely get into the playoffs and win a playoff game. And so he's going to be looking for a quarterback who has that ability to do that. So, uh, you know, my last video about Ryan Fitzpatrick, I still feel like, yes, it makes sense. And it would make sense because I feel like if we are drafting a quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick can win you some ball games and he can make plays. You know, uh, if Alex Smith had not been injured, then I would have probably said, well, you're still drafting a quarterback, but you stick with Alex Smith. But the case is as it stands now. That's where I think Fitzpatrick would, would be great, but he's a bridge quarterback. So I think that what would happen is you would be looking at a quarterback who can not only start in 2021, but maybe far beyond that, uh, maybe not too far beyond that, because if you're drafting a quarterback in the first round, you're going to expect him to take over the reins within the next year or two at least. So maybe I'm contradicting myself because I'm saying, we're not going to get a bridge quarterback, but yet we are if we're drafting as well, right? So I, I realize that doesn't make as much of sense as I thought it was going to make, but hear me out. If something happens and the Washington football team does not get their quarterback in the draft, then I think what they're doing right now, I think they're waiting on what's going to happen with the Raiders and Marcus Mariota. You may have heard other YouTube play, YouTubers say the same thing, but the Raiders are finding out that there is not that big of a market for Marcus Mariota as what they thought they were. And just the simple case in point is the fact that the Raiders are in not so great shape with the cap, and so they are not going to be able to play hardball with anybody with Marcus Mariota. Chances are what's going to happen is they're either going to have to wind up cutting him right out in the next few days, or if they are able to hang on to him and they can't move him in free agency, they may be able to go back and accept a much lower draft pick than what they were hoping to get initially. And I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. And having said that, I think that's what the Washington football team may be waiting on. They may be waiting on the Raiders to kind of break and say, here, here, here you go. Here's a ham and cheese sandwich. You know, we'll take that. You Here, here you go with Marcus Mariota. Um, before, though, I did say something about Marcus Mariota's contract. And I believe it I'd stated somewhere where basically his contract would double if he started. So you would want to negotiate that. I did have a comment in the comment section about why we have, you know, such a great salary cap. We got plenty of room. We got the money. Why do we even need to worry about renegotiating his contract? Well, just the simple case in point is the fact that we still have other holes to fill. And if we're able to go and bring in like an all pro tackle or you know to, to get some more help within the secondary around the safeties and stuff like that you don't want to just go on and overspend for players that is the biggest thing and I really believe that I don't know right now I feel like you nego re you renegotiate that contract with Marcus Mariota that is my opinion I think that's something that the football team would do. I think that's what any other team would do. And right now, do you think that Marcus Mariota would be worth $20 million a year? I, I don't know. I don't know.
But at any rate, that's what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to uh, we're going to either draft a quarterback, and Taylor Heineke would be the starter. But I really think what's going to happen is we're going to get a quarterback in free agency that's a veteran, and we're still going to draft a quarterback. And I really think that Taylor Heineke is going to be the number two guy. That's what I'm thinking. So all that being said, hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did. If you're enjoying this channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot more great content coming your way, and you guys have a great day.